Bonjour everyone, I'm Marlous, a Dutch business owner, and I moved to Burgundy in France in 2019 with my family. And on my channel, I share our slow and simple life here in the French countryside. I talk about brocante, cooking, beautiful places to visit in our region and other parts of France. And every now and then, I do a home tour in which I take you to a gorgeous French house. And I'm happy to share another one of those beautiful houses with you in this video. I'm on my way to a small village in the French Haute Pyrenees in the southwest of France, where Jenny and Justin found an incredibly beautiful 1800s farmhouse. It sits on 1.3 hectares of land and it includes a beautiful farmhouse and an Airbnb, and I'll include a link to that in the description box. There's also a beautiful space where Jenny displays all of her gorgeous brocante finds that she sells on Etsy. I'll include a link below. But later in this video, we'll be touring her brocante shop and she'll be sharing some items that she currently has for sale. standing in front of her magnificent property. They're welcoming me in their 40 square meter gîte that Jenny has decorated using brocante and antique finds and it is absolutely gorgeous. Najid has an adjacent dining room where Jenny serves breakfast and dinner to her guests. shape and it's like wonky it, you know it's it's warped wood I don't know how old it is it's pretty old right? but it's part of the charm and I think it goes really well because you have all the dark wood from that gorgeous furniture and your ceiling and your fireplace and then I see this works really nicely because if you keep this color it's such a different tone wood tone mm -hmm. yeah. I think it really works here. Thank you. And eventually I would like to change out the chairs. These are something that she left for us. And I do like the inside. It's, oh, it's yeah. the original. However, just red doesn't really go with
Jenny's making us dinner, but I'm so excited to see the house. So Justin is showing me around. Ancient sink that was here. Oh, really? So uh, this house was actually originally three different houses. So yeah. the Jeep, and then there was this one, uh, which was part of next door. And so our really friendly neighbor across the street that helps me with all the projects that we do around the house and gives me advice. It was his uh, great great grandmother's house. And what's also great is that uh, Denny helped do all the electricity in the place. So if yeah. there's an electrical issue, <laughs> I know any sort of issue, he knows more about the house than I do. But that's, you need that with these homes, you, you know, you don't know. Yeah. So you need the local people to tell you how things were done and how to restore them properly, you know? Yeah. But I, I'm trying to give more history of what the Jeep is like and what this house was here too. Yeah. And it, it's going to be very hard to find. I might get some names from the Marie's office, but to understand what the, who the people were, what brought them here. Uh, Jenny actually did this painting. It was one of our first. We used to have it in our Paris apartment. It goes really well here. Yeah. As you can tell, she likes her neutral colors. This is the entrance to that third house that they combined. Okay. Um, and there used to be the entrance right where the mirror was, apparently. That's, that goes out to the street? Or uh, it, it would have, no, it's just a wall, but okay. we, uh, back in the day. And um, it's just, uh, when we first came in here, this is where we kind of entered in the house. So it's, it's one of those things that we really fell in love with. And uh, During your first visit during of the house, yeah, yeah, that the house. sold you. <laughs> yeah, we're lucky because a lot of the large mirrors were already here. So... Um, we got to inherit those too. This one we found in a brocante in Spain and I spoke to the gentleman and then I surprised Jenny for our 10 year anniversary of knowing each other with this one. So uh, it's a mimosa plant. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I love yeah. the colors. And we call this one the Louis Couture's room because uh, Marie switched out the marble floor fireplace for an old Louis XIV fireplace that she found. And Marie is the previous owner. Correct, yes. And uh, she bequeathed us the paintings and the mirrors. And this uh, room still needs some work. So uh, this apparently about 40 years ago, uh, there was a big water leak when Marie and the family were on holiday in Spain. She came oh. back and everything was completely soaked. Unfortunately, we couldn't keep the bookshelf because it was just filled with mildew and everything. Yeah. But um, because it was cold uh, in the house, we didn't spend as much time in here as we want to, so that fireplace inserted hopefully it will be a lot better for us. Is it posed or how Yeah, you yeah. do. I think the only thing, Marie, she left us this table, she left us this, this chair. The mirrors and the paintings, but everything else we uh, found at our local full cons and the Greniers and I've just been going antique crazy. I've I never know, been sure it's so crazy. into antiques. Yeah. It's gorgeous. I'll give you the best in the house right no right here <laughs> thank you <laughs> dinner, Jenny gives me a quick tour of our potager vegetable garden.
definitely coming back to Jenny's Brokant shop tomorrow, so stay tuned in this video. As Justin mentioned yesterday, they're installing a wood burner in their salon and I'm enjoying a lovely breakfast that Jenny made for me. And I'm going back into the gîte to film some of the items that Jenny sells. She actually displays some of her brocante finds in the gîte with price tags so her guests can buy the items that they like.
Uh, one this and not one that. This was left for us from the previous owner, and it used to be in between the windows. And I decided that we're going to put it in here and make use of it. So this is where I keep all of our pantry stuff. Yeah. So wow. making use of all the space that we have. I mean, before, when you saw the kitchen, there were cabinets, you know. Yeah, all the, all the shelving. And all the shelving. Yeah. And so that felt really good to rip out. So what I do is when people stay at the Jeet, I get an idea of, you know, who's coming and I change things out constantly. Everyone has a new decor, something, a different element, even down to the bedding or the towels. Oh, really? It's always different. The way I present the water or the cups, it, it all changes. And Everything that's also gets. because you love decorating so much yes, and <laughs> styling. Much. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I mean, I can spend hours just moving things around. And uh, I think I get that from my mom. She's very much like that. She'll spend like a weekend where she'll remove everything, start fresh, and you come home and the, and house, the house is completely, completely different. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's like the creative side of me. I'm, I love change. It's very important. And I don't like not being able to use what I have. So that also gives me an opportunity to change things around. So I'm forced to use what I yeah, have yeah. set aside. Like I have used these plates before, you yeah. know? <laughs> um, the spoons I've just listed on Etsy for sale. So no, these are breadcrumb scruples for your table. Oh, yeah. Fancy. This is how they did it in the 19th century. <laughs> yeah. Early wow. 20th century. This has a little bit of an erosion, but we're still offering it for sale. What's their mark here? There's the number. It's marked. Mm. Just needs to be polished. Mm. And then I'll post it on the Etsy account. It's very soon. But this one seems more Art Deco to me. I think this piece might be older. Yeah. So, yeah. Breadcrumb scooper. The uh, absinthe, absinthe is, yeah. is a French um, aperitif. It's very strong, like 70% proof. It's green. Mm -hmm. And you put the ice, or excuse me, the sugar cube there on the bottom. And then you pour the absinthe over it. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was a tea strainer. But I'm looking at it and I'm thinking my grandma had this and I think she did use it as a tea strainer. <laughs> They're gorgeous. 19th century candle holders. That's These are really old. You can tell by the by the weight and the way that they're exactly made, the, the welding. Yeah. There's a wax residue on there, but I think that's what gives it its charm. You know, it's I been used agree. and it's been loved. But and this is Digman Sakamine, I think. Oh, let's take a look. That's what it looks like to me. See the green? Don't put it on top of the plates. No. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. I mean, oh, wow. look yeah. at that. I mean, I'm thinking early 19th century just because of the, I mean, just the way that the spores are. You can check by looking for the stamp because the weight of it, I would think it, it would be metal argenté rather than the solid silver. silver. All this silverware was left by the previous owner for that, you in this drawer. Yeah. And her, uh, her, their initials were D and P because her mother's maiden name was Pratt. And her yeah. father's name is Dupont. Yeah. So they combined Dupont Pratt. Yeah. Male initial first. <laughs> well, <laughs> of course, yeah. right? Jean Gentil. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That was already here, so we it was perfect. Yeah. Hi everybody, welcome to our brocante here in the Haute Pyrenees. Um Having a boutique of mine has always been a dream, and why not begin within our home, right? Exactly. So we have this 
um, what we call the atelier, which was the workshop. Uh, if you scroll back through my YouTube channel, you can see that this place when we moved in was filled to the roof with just junk. But I will show you some of my favorite things. I please do have a big fondness for pottery. I love pottery and I particularly like pottery with very unique shapes, such as this one. Handles, very thin and delicate. I especially like them when they're signed. Mm -hmm. This one is a very unique color with the beautiful glaze and I like the texture and the roughness of it. And you know this brand very well. How do you say that? Sargamine. Oui. See, and this says Atelier d'Art de Lorraine. So Sargamine was a village or is a village in Lorraine. Uh -huh. And at some point the production merged with the, a site in Diguan. Well, you can oh, look wow. that up. That's why you find Sargamine mm -hmm. and Diguan and then Diguan Sargamine. It's, it's just a, in the 70s, I think. Oh, 1870s is when that happened. They did a this one's really gorgeous. Yeah, this one is, you can tell it's fait à la main because it's not by a manufacturer. It's studio it's a person. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this one's beautiful. They did a nice job on the glazing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's one of my favorite I pieces. That. I love the little ones as well. I love this one. Very partial to the cream colors. This is nice, like to put sugar or salt in your kitchen mm -hmm. with a little spoon. You can put little flowers in there too. Yeah. For example, okay. like flowers in these. I think these were old, um, used as shot glasses. So an idea would be to fill them up as little bud vases. Yeah. Yeah. What are those? What's this? Oh. This is an ashtray. Each individual petal has its own cigarette rest. And I think it oh, makes for wow. a really nice sculptural display. So you move them around like this and move mm -hmm. the petals. And yeah. When we first saw this, we thought they were for hors d'oeuvres, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, appetizers. Yeah. We were told that this was from the, uh, the Netherlands. Yeah. It looks like it. Netherlands. Oh, sorry. For um, sorry. washing their, not washing, but... Brushing coat. off your lint. Yeah, I'll demonstrate. <laughs> Justin? Yeah. It's when you leave someone's home and mm. you're like, oh, let me brush off your coat for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's another piece of lint. It okay. looks, it could be, it looks Dutch to me with the hand painted things on it. This is gorgeous. This is de and then it's glazed white. That's pretty rare, isn't it? It is. Really gorgeous. If I couldn't find everything gray and white, it would make me so happy. I know. <laughs> These are nice. Oh, yeah. Those are definitely French antiques. This mirror, we've uh, had it in Paris, and then we brought it down with us, too. Mm. I think she says it's Venetian glass. Jenny just found this soap dish. It's a, it's a pig. Yeah. It's really cute. And it's very heavy. Yeah. I think it's made out of iron. Mm -hmm. But is this what you found in Spain? Or is this because we are so close to the Spanish border that Which we have one? that style? Well, all this looks, um, this looks very um, Spanish or Portuguese to me. No, that's we what found I mean. these at uh, various places on the French side. Well, I think that's because well, this area yes. is influenced. Definitely. The Moors, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Uh, the the Catalans also. Yeah. Basque. Basque. Wow, look at this. Was this left in the farmhouse, or did you find it somewhere? Jenny, do you recall? Which one? This copper one. No, we bought that one. Okay. Wonderful. So that's where they used to drink water out of. That was a modern. That's an ancient way of drinking water, of keeping your water cups with you. So, so you, tell you me would, the water cup. You'll have to Google it, Marla. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a water cup. It's a water holder. Jug. Yeah, yeah, a jug. jug. So okay. you pour it out of the spout. Garden. Yeah. These are beautiful as well. But what's really cool about these is that these two actually have lids. Yeah. So. It's, it's a burrier yeah. for the butter. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. 
This is beautiful as well. Yeah. That could be used to put chocolates in maybe, or? They're um, either paperweights or book. Uh, oh yeah, like presse book. papier. Yeah. Really heavy. Oh. Gorgeous. So I found some old toolboxes. Oh! <laughs> They are lovely though. I love that. Yeah. Would these be coquetier or for eggs or is it something else? Oh no, I think it's for drinking. Oh, is it? I thought so, but maybe you're right. Maybe it is an egg holder, but I don't maybe know. Maybe you're right. Jenny, do you think these are egg holders and not cups? Try to put an egg in and see if the size feels correct. Yeah. But it could be coquetier, as they yeah. say. I think one of my favorite things that I want to share is this cutlery drainer. I've never even seen that. I think it's from this? England, but I love that this would look really cute on someone's kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, two weeks ago, it was completely different in here, and then she just came in one day and just started. Oh, it's really cute. Yeah, we... Um, Putting your cigarette on here and then yeah. you could put chopsticks. You can put whatever you want, but um, we didn't know what it was originally until we saw somebody had told us what it is and then we saw it and said, oh, we already have one like that. So we picked up another one. So you're more than welcome to film them if you like. So it looks gorgeous. For example, I have these already listed on my account. <laughs> these, dear. I like the sculptural shapes of those, just yep. as I do with these African sculptures. There's something really delicate about fine bronze antique sculptures. And I just find they're very mignon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge collector of alabaster, so <laughs> I'd like to offer this one. It's a cute little alabaster bowl. You could put little things in there. Mm -hmm. And then here in this little corner is my latest alabaster find. I don't come across these very often, but I really like the legs because they remind me of Laffy. It's these little lion oh, really? paws. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really cute. Laffy the dog. Mm, mm. Nice. This is currently for sale on my Etsy. I believe it's, I mean, it's definitely early 1900s. Oh, it's beautiful. It's very old. And then some dollies. This would just be nice as a vide bush is what it's called in French. Mm, yeah. You put it in your hallway and then you throw your keys on there. So you don't lose them. I like these guys. It reminds me of old times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three old men sitting on a bench. Mm -hmm. And a alabaster canister. I think it'd be great for a little table salt. Yeah. I've always loved the, the white wash of wood. And I saw that it was already fabricated. And I thought, oh wow, this is so beautifully done. It would look really cute in a woman's boudoir or yeah. just in a girl's room. Oh, and my mirrors. I have yet to list this. This is uh, one of my latest brocante finds from a couple of weeks ago. I can't figure out how old it is. I'm going to say 30s or 40s. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, because of the back. Still learning. Yeah. yeah. And then this is uh, Italian Venetian handheld mirror. Very delicate. Mm. Okay, I go now. <laughs> Thank you.
And that unfortunately brings me to the end of my visit with Justin and Jenny. If there are any items that you like, please don't hesitate to check Jenny's Etsy shop or reach out to her via Instagram. I've linked everything down below. Please do share with us in a comment what you love most about Jenny and Justin's home. And I fully understand if you're going to say all of it, because that's what I would say. I absolutely loved it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.